Hey everyone, welcome to Planes Overhead. Uh, we're doing a video today on the A320 series, continuing on the navigation topic. And under that, we're doing uh, radio navigation and uh, radio altimeter as well in the same video. Standard disclaimer, please uh, do not use uh, any of this information that you're learning in these courses in real world scenarios or for any practical application. Okay, this is just for system understanding and help you out. Radio navigation, there are three types of tuning in the aircraft. Automatic tuning, in which the FMGC will tune the nav aids automatically with each FMGC controlling its own side receivers. For example, FMGC1 will do VOR1, FMGC2 will do VOR2, respective sides. But in case if one FMGC fails, the remaining FMGC will control both the side receivers without any issues. And uh, how do we get to know is just a VOR identifier is displayed on the ND. That means the aircraft is doing automatic tuning. Okay, and the letters are also small in font. In uh, manual tuning, what you have is in case you want to override the automatic tuning of the Navid by the FMGC, you can do manual tuning. This would generally be done in a case of a departure or arrival where you want, suppose let's say if you're departing out of Delhi, you want your VOR to stay with Delhi after departure and not automatically change to any other station. So you would do manual tuning. And uh, the thing is that this does not affect the automatic function of the FMGC, meaning back of the mind, the FMGC is al already auto tuning for the next station, meaning in case you clear the manual tuning, it will go to the next station automatically. How do you identify this is there's a letter M underlined on the ND and the identifier letters are bold and big okay backup tuning this is like a worst case scenario where you've lost both your fmgc's so nobody is there to tune your res receivers so the fly crew can use the rmps on the pedestal for backup tuning so captain rmp will do vor1 and adf1 first officer rmp will control vor2 and adf2 both rmps control both ils's simultaneously okay so RMP3 cannot be used for nav aids tuning if it is installed. Not all aircraft have RMP3 these days, but if it is installed, you cannot use it for nav aid tuning. And uh, you can distinguish this by seeing a letter R, which is underlined on the ND near the VOR identifier. Okay, so that was about radio navigation. It is as simple as this. Talking about radio altimeter, uh, radio altimeter, there's not much information even in the uh, FCOM. So, there are two RAs on the aircraft. RA1 will display on PFT1, that is the captain side. RA2 will display on the PFT2, that is on the first officer side. And it works below 2500 feet AGL. It works even if the loudspeakers are off. Calls are generated through the FWC, flight warning computer, that is. And there's a retard call that comes at 20 feet for manual landing, meaning in case you are landing the plane, the retard call comes at 20 feet. And if you're performing an auto land, the retard call will come at 10 feet. So that was about radio altimeter and radio navigation. Thank you for watching. Subscribe to the YouTube channel, like the Facebook page for regular updates. And give this video a thumbs up if you like this video. Do not forget to share it as well with your friends. Comment below if you have any doubts. Cheers and happy landings, guys. Take care. See you. Bye-bye.